What's going on everybody? EJ here, your video coach. I'm so excited that you are here for this class. This is how to create content for your videos or come up with content for your videos video class. And um, real short to the point class, I have my notes here, so I have, hope you have yours. So what it's gonna do is I'm gonna talk kind of about how you can think about how to come up with uh, topics and content for your videos. And then I'm gonna give you some examples. And so I came up with a couple different examples from students, uh, businesses that were students before, if that makes any sense. So like students in a video school, I picked, I think it was four different, one, two, three, four, four? Yes, four different um, entrepreneurs types of businesses and kind of came up with some ideas. Hopefully that will help you get the ball rolling. Um, first, just to start it off, I would say you're probably thinking about it too hard. It's probably easy. Anything you would think about taking a picture of, just take a video of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's how it can be. It does not have to be anything. As far as the video is concerned, it does not have to be anything extravagant. It does not have a to be anything long, I actually would advise against that, especially because this class was actually asked for because people were specifically looking for help with how to create videos or topics for videos for social media. And so in pretty much all, a lot of my classes, I say try to aim for at least 60 seconds, um, not at least, the most 60 seconds, especially if you want it to be on like a feed, like your Instagram feed, your Facebook feed, things like that. If you're looking for something like Instagram stories or Facebook stories or even YouTube, of course we know those can be a little bit longer, but um, we just say 60 seconds, just because. So it's usually easier to think about in 60 second increments because it's really not that long. One minute is not that long. So that's the first thing that normally Think about what you would normally want to take a picture of or what you have taken a picture of and just be like, cool, so let me take a video of it. The other thing I'm gonna say before I get to my notes is that videos do not have to have talking in them. And I think just from the feedback from my previous students, that's what um, well, one of the roadblocks is, is that they think that it needs to have words and it doesn't. So in um, the editing videos on your phone class when we were going through um, two free apps that you can download on your phone um, both of those apps have background music and so if you just take different angles of your product or you're posing with your product or somebody else is posing with your product or um, you have it outside or on a rug you know or something to that effect um, you could just take different angles of it in the video as a video and then just put some background music to it and you absolutely do not have to have music because what you need to think about is that your video is to be used as a tool to get people's attention, right? You need to grab their attention and make them ask the question, what is this, right? So if you are getting some pretty cool angles or even if they're just like basic angles and then you have some really catchy background music to it, that's great, okay? Um, don't think you have to go through leaps and bounds and climb out Everest to get a video together because you don't have to do that. If you choose not to have words in your video, if you choose not to have talking in it, and that's totally fine, again, um, just make sure in the caption you explain what it is, right? So if I have, I don't know, a pillow because it's right here <laughs> and I'm taking some um, really cool slow-mo shots with my phone, of the pillow um, in the caption, I would say something like, now in stock, microfiber pillows that whisk away the sweat as you sleep, you know, something to that effect. So like I would go and explain what the product is or whatever I took the video of in the caption. So I would say that's the second thing that you do not have to have words in your video. So don't let that stop you, okay? All right, so down to what I actually wrote down. So um, pretty much, when you are coming up or trying to come up with topics or content topics for your videos for especially social media with your social media marketing plan whether you have one or not um you're pretty much just taking your business and breaking it down into consumable consumable because i can talk bye right so again 60 seconds is not very long you cannot say everything about your business in 60 seconds and then actually come across to where people want to know more ask the question what is this um, or engage in any way, right? So you need to take your business and break it down to miniature bites 
and that's what becomes your video. So you can take, um, I'll just give you an example. I use me, for example. Um, I'm a bunch of different things, right? I'm a video editor, I'm a videographer, I'm a live streamer, I'm a tech consultant, I'm a video consultant, I'm a video teacher, things like that, right? Um, I could just rattle off all those things in one 60 second video, but I'm not gonna get the people I want to get because I'm gonna be saving everything so fast that they're not gonna get it, right? So I could say, okay, this video, I'm gonna talk about the video school. Cool, that's still very general because I have a bunch of different um, classes that are up now. I have classes that I have been planning on going and they are um, using different types of equipment. They're for different levels and all that type of stuff. Like I have one class up right now um, that I was saying before about editing on your phone, but then I am currently recording a class about editing in Adobe Premiere Pro, right? Those are two very different audiences. Well, not very different, but you know what I mean, like different audiences, right? So saying, saying that I wanna make this video about the video school, that's very general. Now, here's where you can go with this. Here's where kind of like the marketing plan comes in and I am going to do a class on how to create videos according to a marketing plan. Cause I think sometimes when people hear a marketing plan, they think, oh my God, that's a lot of work. Oh my goodness, I don't know where to start. I don't have any marketing background, da, da, da. But a lot of it, especially the basic type of marketing plans are very common sense and very, um, they, they flow together. So pretty much you're, you're probably already doing a marketing plan. You just probably have to repackage it so it's more in line, but anyway, so Let's say I'm in a marketing plan and it's something I wanted, something new I want to introduce, which I'm, I actually have something new I want to introduce, but depending on when you watch this, it might already be out. But um, uh, I'm not gonna say what it is, but I have this new service that I'm putting together, right? So it's new and I need to introduce it. So I'm going to do something called an introduction video. The introduction video is made to be general. So let's say I was um, doing an introduction video for the video school, um, which I'm actually getting ready to re-record it, but neither here nor there stay on topic oh my gosh anyway so um be like hey entrepreneurs you want to know how to make great videos i'm a professional i'm a video teacher let me teach you how to do it guess what you need the video school that something like that would be it and then i may say something like um enroll in courses work at your own pace which is true um also have the option of one-on-one -on -one coaching and live coaching in a group which is also true um zoom calls youtube lives especially for students uh building a community uh, da, 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 da. you know what i mean so that's what we would call an introductory video so i would say you probably need some type of inter introductory video um even if it's not something like new new but if if it's not something you have not officially introduced i would say do an introductory video and that video i would say you can keep pretty general right but then here's where the flow comes in right you start with the introductory video and you talk about the different parts so like i was saying with the video school it has different courses we have basic we have on your phone we have if you're using a camera if you um, want to do a editing program on your computer we have podcast editing we have um audio editing for videos lighting all those type of things like i could say all that in my introductory video and then just the things i named how many did things did i name like let's say seven or eight that's like eight separate videos that i already have planned to do right so i already talked i said lighting in the introductory video so then i know that there's another video i need i can record that's talking about lighting right so it's like i'm already creating or already setting myself up for success and then already telling my audience um, not really straightforwardly but you know what I mean like they kind of it when they see that lighting video they won't be as surprised because I mentioned it in the introductory video right and then you can always reference the introductory video in the lighting video you'd be like all right guys so like I told you in the intro introductory video I'm gonna talk to you about what you're gonna learn in the lighting courses in the video school and then go on from there, right? Because the point is that you want to get the videos where you can talk about them in a way where people will understand, are interested, are curious about it in 60 seconds. And so doing that reference for like the first five, six, seven, eight seconds is just tying everything together and making everything more cohesive, right? So breaking down your business into consumable bites, that's pretty much where the content is coming from. So you can do introductory video and go from there. Do you have to do introductory video? No, you don't have to. Um, at all, and I know I was rushing my words right there. My bad. I'm sorry. 
you don't have to do an introductory video if you don't want to but it's just i'm just helping you get examples okay so then let's break it down even more so let's say i broke it down to the lighting section of the video school right there are a lot of different elements of lighting and i could break that down even further so like right now actually i am filming with um, daylight and actually one light, right? So that is one type of lighting setup. Um, you can have lighting setup where you have two lights and no daylight, filming in the daytime, filming outside, filming at night, um, filming in a closed room, filming in an open room, uh, the different types of equipment you can have, things, uh, lights that work better with certain equipment versus other equipment, um, ring lights, uh, USB lights, battery power lights, uh, adapter power lights, you know what I mean? There's a lot of different angles that I could teach about lighting. And so then I could break it down even further and say, okay, um, let's talk about the lighting setup. So really when I teach my in-person classes, I teach about one light, two light, and three light setups because those are the, the most, common, um, most common lighting setups that usually my students or other entrepreneurs who are wanting to learn how to do this have. So you either have like one light, two light, or three lights in both like using lamps sorry i'm pointing over there because there's a lamp over there but i just realized because i looked at my monitor you can't see it so never mind but using lamps you know um lights around your house your ceiling lights daylight versus professional lights things like that so let's say i wanted to do that so one video could be using the daylight that comes in from your windows that's one video i could briefly show you how to do that and then in a caption um, or even, you know, in small words, flashing on the screen, say, if you want more information, click the link in my bio to go to the video school and sign up for the lighting course, right? You want to give people enough where they feel like they have learned something, but you don't get them all of it because you want them to get that little brownie, get that little, you know, appetizer and then make their way to the full meal, which is wherever the end goal is. So if your end goal is to have them set up a call for a consultation, that's the full course meal. In my example, it would be signing up for the video school. That's, oh no, you don't, well, technically you don't end with a full course meal, but like dessert, right? So the end, end of the meal is the dessert. So my dessert would be them actually get enrolling in one of the courses in a video school, okay? So you just have to, content is all around you. It really is. Content for your business is all around you. Think about the things that you do every day. How can you turn it into a video? Even if you are a service-based business and you don't have physical products to show people, you can absolutely do it. So one of my favorite um, people to follow on um, Instagram, her name is Maya Elias, and she's just super, super amazing. I've taken some of her business courses and she serves female entrepreneurs, but she's just so amazing. But one thing that she has started, she's a service-based um, entrepreneur, service-based provider. So she does coaching and things like that. So in other words, she doesn't have physical products that you can buy and she has to take to the post office to mail to you. Everything she does is like phone calls, um, video stuff, um, online, things like that, right? So one thing that I love that she does is she, in her Instagram story, she gives people an inside look to the behind the scenes, AKA B BTS. And she's been doing these time lapses. So if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen that I started doing it because I was like, oh my God, that is an amazing idea. Cause one, one, here's the thing. Because I, like her, I'm a service-based provider, a lot of the stuff that I do, including my video school, I can access on my phone. And so in order for me to focus on one task, sometimes I have to put my phone away. But if I'm doing a time lapse on my phone, which if you go to your camera on your phone, that should be a setting somewhere. I know it looks different on whatever phone you have, but it should be a setting somewhere. I can set it up and press the time lapse and that helps me not only focus on what I'm doing because my phone is somewhere else just sitting up, you know, leaning against the lamp or books or a wall or something, um, time lapsing what I'm doing. But then I'm actually creating content also because people get to see behind the scenes. One of the classes, I forget which one it is. I think it's the editing on your phone class. I think. I think it's that class. Um, you see, that class and or the foundation, um, the foundation video class, which is a class where you take where there's no editing and you just learning how to frame and the basics of recording yourself on your phone, things like that. I said that people are nosy 
and they are. And that's not always a bad thing and you can always flip it to your advantage. So people are always wanting to see behind the scenes things. Now, like if you're an avid YouTube watcher like I am, because <laughs> I watch everybody's stuff, I love watching vlogs. I do. And all that is, is people recording themselves doing day-to-day -day stuff. I can't tell you why I like watching vlogs, but no, actually I can. I was about to say, because I can't figure it out, but I can't. But I think I like the human aspect behind it because I think when people are seen as influencers or celebrities, they're put on a pedestal. And then when you get this inside look to behind the scenes, you see that they also struggle. They also have hectic days. They also wake up late. They also forget to eat. They also have way too much to do. They also say yes way too many times, right? So it makes it more human to you. So I absolutely love that aspect of it, right? Plus, if you look on people's channels, um, yes, they, especially like the big influence, influencers, the big celebrities, the curated content, like the content they record and edit and all that other stuff has like a lot of views. But if you look at their vlogs, their vlogs have a lot of views too. And then if you look at how it's edited, normally like the big, and I do this too for my videos, there's like an intro and an outro and things like that. But if you watch how the difference between the two type of videos are recorded, the vlogs, are they're sometimes shaky. They're not always on the tripod because, you know, they're moving. And so they're recording in their cars. They're recording as they're holding the camera. If they're in a store, the, the camera is usually on the cart like you can tell it's sitting in like the the baby seat of the front front of the cart and it's like pointed up you can tell it's like it's imperfectly perfect right so it makes them more human and people love that and that proves a couple different points one that people are nosy so give them something to watch and to be engaged with you with but then two you don't always have to be perfect right do i say use a tripod absolutely i'm using a tripod right now you know but the fact is that you can still have good content even in the midst of, right? So it, it shows a couple different things. That's it all that to say. That those videos still have really good views because people like to see behind the scenes. And it's just being known because humans are normally naturally curious. And I can say that confidently because you look at kids. They're always into stuff, right? You, as you grow up, you learn, you know, different boundaries and things like that, but that has to be taught. Naturally, they're curious. Naturally, they're gonna get into things, right? I have a, an infant right now, and I cannot tell you why he's obsessed with plucks. My, my oldest son was obsessed with um, other things. Actually, they both were obsessed with tags too, right? But my, young, my, my baby son, he, just, he loves plucks. I don't know why. And it's like, just the metal part. I don't know why, but anyway, um, so it's just natural. So why not play into that, right? Because the key to doing um, the videos and even the pictures or even the text, whatever you post is to keep people engaged because when, if you don't engage your audience and all of a sudden you spring something on them, they're probably not gonna buy it. They're probably not gonna come to your event. They're probably not going to attend, things like that, right? So if you always keep them engaged, when you present them with something, it's probably more easily received, right? So they're warm instead of cold. Cold is just bringing something on somebody, boom, here it is, and then warm is done, okay? So hopefully you get that. So let's go into some examples. Oh, I am so sorry. You know what? That's gonna be the end of this video. If you're interested in seeing the examples and watching how I explain to things, I invite you to sign up for the video school. This whole class is a free class on the video school. So you can take this class, go look, listen to the examples as I explain them, and then get a feel for the video school. And that way, if, if you want to take some other classes, you can. But if you're interested in seeing the rest of this class, interested in seeing the different examples that I give, it, the link will either be on the screen or in the comments, the caption, the link, wherever you're watching this, other, <laughs> other directions will be said. But I encourage you to sign up for the video school because this class is free. So what do you have to lose? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. All right. I'll see you at the video school. Come on over. We can talk about stuff. Yeah.